Hey, I'm Penny USB Mike, a pixel artist animator that has worked on games like Dome Keeper, Shogun Showdown, and right now, my own solo project called Bullet Bunny. This tutorial is a condensed version. I release full unedited versions for my Patreons and Itch. You can find in the links below if you want to check them out. They include more information, mistakes from start to finish, no editing, and not condensed. So if you're interested, check them out. There is about 20 plus tutorials. If you join as a Patreon, you can get all of them for just a couple bucks, or you can buy them individually on my Itch store. I want to redesign and reanimate this character. So the first part here will be redesigning the, the sprite itself, and then we'll do the attack animations. It's pretty cool. We're going to try to make it better. So we'll start with a dark base color. I'm just going to get the silhouette. We just want to get a, a cool silhouette. This is the initial. The initial goal, and we'll toggle on and off the, the symmetry button. We'll make the stance somewhat the same, and we definitely want the, the wire in the back. We want that for sure. We know. Maybe coming out of the head this time. The things I want to change is I want to get the stance a little a little better. Perhaps a bigger bigger sword. We're just going to draw the outline of the cloak. So we'll just keep messing around with tiny pixels. We want to get this stance real nice. Maybe just a single, single eye this time. I think single looks good. Maybe even like so. I want to make the sword bigger. We can even test the... I'm going to go to cell properties and move... Move this behind the character. It kind of looks cool behind it as well. Really dig how this design already looks. So I think we'll quickly set it up so it's ready for animations. We can go ahead and delete this old guy. He's done well. Still a cool design. Let's uh let's set up our key animation. So we know we're gonna do two swipes, like in the old animation, and then kind of a, a swoosh, kind of like a lunging attack where he comes this way. And we're gonna make the sword feel as heavy as we can, as smooth as possible. So let's get to it. So Let's go through our, our key animations we want to do. So we might do one for kind of a prep where he he's bent a bit, hand is on the sword, it's kind of getting ready to, to do a quick slash. So that might be our keyframe, number one. Number two will be after the slash. So the animation has happened, the sword has been swung, and he's in a pose where the sword's now in front. So we'll use the cell properties to, and the Z index to make it in front, and the sword will be somewhere over here. His face will be looking this way, the wire will be on this side. And then the third one will be, will be another swing, and it will be closer to this but in a more of a battle ready stance where he's lower and the sword is, is further back like it's just been swung. That probably all sounds quite similar. Um, they have some slight differences, so let's let's get to it. Let's do the, the first one. So we're gonna use a V tool a lot, which is the move tool you can see down here. We're also gonna turn on onion skin, which is right here. And what that does is allow you to see frame below it. So he's gonna get ready, so his head's gonna go down a little bit. The sword's gonna maybe tilt a little bit down. His body might or just a tad move his foot up a bit. Um, let's match the cloak up with the it's just on the outside of that, so let's try to let's try to match that and see. So that would be it, but we want it lower, perhaps too low. We can hold this keyframe, let's say uh, one or two frames afterwards, and we can make this this uh, cloak sway just a tad to give it a little extra. And let's see the wire. So the wire's in the middle of the head and on this one, two, third peak at the bottom. So let's let's keep that consistent. So he's he's in, in the position, and we'll hold this position, and we might do some slight tweaks um, as he's prepping to do a swing. So now we're gonna jump to the sword. And we're gonna, we're gonna bring this in front and we're gonna flip it around and what we want to do is now turn his head as well so this third keyframe i'm just gonna make sure i'm on the head layer and go shift h turn it that way and it's gonna be somewhere around here we might tilt his head but for now we're just gonna move the base sprite into position the cloak is also going to be flipped it looks hunched there it's kind of a cool stance we might be able to work with that sometimes you figure things out along the way we're gonna split up the cloak make sure that's on on the one side and then we're just gonna move this so it's lower it makes a bit more sense this is going to be erased and just remember all this you're removing technically it's going to go somewhere so if you want to be perfect you can move two there you can move this one you can flip it upside down and move it here you can move another one there because you want to keep the the volume the same so now you have your idle kind of pose uh, battle stance ready swing perhaps the eye is still looking this way or looking more in the middle that kind of looks creepy and cool it's kind of got a cool stance in the end the wire we can kind of show you want to make it somewhat noticeable this is already giving me ideas just just from the stance and it's like i, I wanted to do like the the original concept but he's already so different and then i think we're going to do a key pose where he brings the sword up and does a heavy slam and we can some cool the effects visuals whatnot so I'm, I'm happy with this keyframe for now we still might change things later but let's go ahead and make our fourth one like i said this one's going to be um going to be bringing his head up more the sword's going to be kind of heavy now the cloak come up wires will come up it might be an easy one the cloak will 
if it's consistency, we'll move that down. And then we'll just go on the leg layer and erase. And the cloak here will make shorter. So now you should have more of a visual on what he's going to do. And that's a uh, idle, idle, prep, swing, uh, build up for the second move. And then the final keyframe is heavy slam. I think we can take frame two and use it for the heavy slam. Um, let's bring the sword up front. We will flip it around. Just shift H and slam on there. Move the head forward, move the body and the legs forward. Maybe even extend the feet a little bit more. Like so the cloak again, like before, keep the consistency. Cloak over here. Let's see how it looks. So I think we have our key frames figured out and those can always, they can always be altered down the road if we don't like it, but I, I really like this look. It looks creepy and cool. So now we can kind of start filling in the in-betweens and really bringing this whole attack sequence to life. Start with uh, the idle to the battle stance. And what I like to do is, is keep the onion skin. You can see here, it got these little tiny borders and you can drag these and see all the animations, but I'm just gonna keep it surrounded, um, surrounding the second frame. So one and, and three are visible right now. So you can see that one's three and behind here is one sword moving. Let's not move it up. We can move the body ever so slightly. Here, and remove one. Just, just removing some pixels and making some movement does so much to the animation. So you can see here. Let's just go on the cloak, and we're gonna, we're just gonna delete some of these, and then we're gonna add them to the other side. So I think we deleted three or four, and we're just gonna add them. And that just, you can see here, or here, going back and forth. See, it just adds a little bit of movement to it. And we can do it on this side as well. Just remove one, two. And they're behind, so we don't need to add any more. I think delete these ones as well. Like so. And then this cloak, like I said here, um, we can add another in between. So now we have two we're working in. And this cloak will just ever so slightly coming down. Like so. And then even. One more, it's like an in-between, but we're technically moving it afterwards. And just add maybe a couple more pixels on this side, two, three, four, and add this side just to add sway. And now if we go, oh, you can just ever so slightly see that cloak. And I think it's a bit too long. Let's keep it one hot. That cloak ever so slightly move to the right. And it just gives it that little touch. And let's look at the sword now. So the sword goes, tilts there, and then it's kind of stagnant too. So let's let's uh let's prep this a little tiny. Maybe the fourth frame it just moves a little bit more, and then the last frame it really gets ready. And then we're going for the big slash. So now we have. Let's just uh, go over what we did. We had the idle frame, and then the attack, and we added three in betweens, the slightest moves ever but it gives so much, and we'll tackle the wire. Uh, let's tackle it now while we're here. So this wire moves down, so we want to keep this attached to the head. Maybe the wire, that's a little bit of there, it's down. Maybe this down as well. You can just see a little bit of movement in the wire, which adds, again, just so much to it in the, in the end. So I think we're already there. And this is gonna be a, since he's a samurai kind of quick assassin, um, this is gonna be a quick strike. And we're gonna add a layer here, which is gonna be the VFX. And this will be the slash itself. I think we're gonna go for like a, kind of a hard slash. As I'm on the layer above, I'm just kind of going behind the character itself. And then front, I'll go in front, and you can see the sword here. We went too high. Let's just go a couple, four, or above. So we should be good there. So now we can fill in those. And what we're going to do is add a new frame. This is kind of like an in between aftermath. Um, and we're just going to add kind of like recoil to, to the swing. You can already see here, just going through it manually. And even add a bit more to this. Make sure this is going on the ground. It covers all his body. And the aftermath. We'll just add two. Two frames for now. 
We'll, we'll work on the V effect, which we you can do some cool stuff. But I think I'm just gonna do. that and we're into that frame so we'll have to adjust those probably but let's just see but the sword we can have it kind of extend a bit and then he kind of brings it in slowly like so the effects of filling here And then we need it in between from here to here. Or we can just use the sword and kind of start the in-between early. Or kind of starts to go up now. And then comes up and we're gonna add one more frame when it's kind of higher so we can this sword here. And then do the same as we did before. Delete some of the cloak. Sorry, we wanna to add to the cloak. Delete some on that side. Add to the cloak here. see where we're at. So I like all the, the timing, the momentum. Um, I just need the final slam and then we can we can start touching up everything and make it as perfect as possible. So let's let's start getting that final swing in here and we're just gonna have a couple two after frames I usually start with and then we're gonna do the effects layer and we're gonna make this kind of a heavy swing. Um, I kind of want to make it go behind so it just feels like it has a little more depth to it. Fill in behind it. Let's uh, put his head bounces there, comes up. It. It's kind of the movement there. The cloak will add some to the initial flash and delete some on this side and then it settles a bit you can add some there for the duplicates and erase those it should be it you just sell it and a sword maybe we'll try to give a little bounce to it It looks heavy, it looks cool, the stances are, are easy to read. So the aftermath, he shoot or he swings, and it's going. And then we can even add just a little bit more to the cloak. Just to give the cloaks so much more. We can I, I dig that for now, but let's make the sword make him slide it slide it real far in. We might do some extra work on the cloak physics there. So he kind of like brings it in and then that's that's uh, cool for the eventually we, we can we can do the the in-betweens and connecting that to the idol um, but same process doing the in-betweens you already have the keyframes of that and the idol but I do like how that looks so let's uh, go ahead and unlink this cloak follow it so it comes back we kind of want the cloak to Delete some here, some there, maybe delete quite a bit, I think. Have a couple more, oh, there. let's see how that looks. So it goes back and then it still goes back, so it should go back a little more. So we were just off by a tiny bit, I think. Um, Let's just clean up, clean up that a little bit more, and then this one, eat it, and have it slowly come in. Yep, that that looks pretty good. So then we want to add this to the end here. Have him stand up. So let's do an in between. So we want to do this frame and this frame. Doing in betweens so will probably take two or three. Like most of the timing I use typically does that. That up. Woke up. Ta -da. Again, keep the consistency down here. Mm 
wire can come kind of so I think and then we're gonna add one more in between but we're gonna take the middle pose and work backwards from it so bring the wire to the head the cloak will be one down perhaps it's a little bit in there if we lost a couple pixels so we'll do that and the sword will do its thing so it looks good you can see that the sword just kind of moves back to its position but let's work on that right now that, that will be kind of the, the fun part of this so in between and this is kind of where you want to start shaping it and we're gonna need we should do one in between for it where you're kind of connecting the sword from these two so let's do do that and the head as well so this in between will kind of be the real between where even moving the body over the sword will be the main selling point on this though because we're going to be we're going to be maneuvering it in a way we're going to turn it here and make it smaller any stray weird looking pixels we're going to clean up and it looks looks pretty good you can, you can sort it you can see the sword turn um we can try one more frame maybe even one more here that one can be there and we're gonna we're gonna work backwards again so the head will be this head can be here cloak and lose just a couple just to sell that movement because we don't want any frames to be exactly the same i think that should be good and the sword itself this is where we want this we want to use this one again and just kind of sell it a little tiny bit more so it's like really turning in i think Oh, let's see how that looks. And to me, that looks great. Let's turn the go to frame properties. Um, let's switch it to let's do 85 milliseconds. Just be a tad quicker. And that looks real smooth. So I'm really digging this. Um, so let's go ahead and add some VFX to finish it off. So we just need to add to this now. And you can do. You can do so many cool things, like you can do, um, the original concept was an electric samurai, that's where the wire comes in, so we can do something like that, which is always fun, and you do some squiggly lines and then you can, you can skip a frame, and do like that, and not skip a frame, and then skip the frame after, do it twice on that one, you can do some squigglies into the ground, and kind of the ground okay the electricity looks pretty cool and add some, uh, some a bit more to the slash here and you can really feel the power in this so let's add some more sparks kind of top here I think the Z layer needs just, I think we're at six still. All of these would be a bit lower. So keep working on top of it. And then it goes back. So let's see how that looks. Very cool. 